Welcome to Cross the Tracks, the podcast whose mission is to highlight the artists behind the best new releases from both the hottest new talent as well as some of the biggest black music artists. Today's special guests are a couple of singer-songwriters, musicians, arrangers and producers with such a formidable track record of work that I feel sure that after learning more about them, you'll be left wondering just why you'd never heard of them before. The two artists in question, Claude Kelly and Chuck Harmony, have got together to form the rather unique and groundbreaking band, Lewis York. I checked some of these credits and tell me if any of these names I need to shoot my researcher about. So I've got that, Mary J. Blythe. John Legend, Michael and Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, Rihanna, Fantasia, Jasmine Sullivan, as well as Miley Cyrus, Bruno Mars, Christina Aguilera, and Celine Dion. Now, you've written or played on or helped to arrange for all of those artists, is that true? Yeah, we, we basically wrote and produced for those artists. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When I speak to people, Chuck, still when I say, listen, guess what? I've got Louis York on. They're going to be doing the first. I said, Louis who? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm saying, right. listen, you guys got to listen to the podcast because um, I think exactly. it'll, be a teaching, it'll be a teaching period for, about, for everybody. So, so basically, we met in the business uh, uh-huh. writing for Fantasia, Chris and Michelle, and several other, other things, other artists. And okay. uh, we, had been, we had had a great work relationship for seven years and then decided that... Um, I thought we were going to quit the music business because we were uninspired by kind of what you were talking about, the music being formulaic and predictable. And that's not what music should be. It should challenge you and invigorate you and make you think and feel. And so either we were going to quit or we were going to have to find a way to save ourselves. And so we started Lewis York in 2015 in New York City, kind of in between things, uh, because we felt like um, there were sounds and, and, and styles and lyrics and melodies and instruments that needed to be brought to the forefront again um, that were not being brought to the forefront. And we, and, and that we as creators weren't even being asked to consider doing those kind of things. So we went on our own and decided to make the music that we love, but also the music that the world needs, which is honest, heartfelt, excellent music. And that, that sounds so easy to say. <laughs> it, but yeah. it's easier, easier, easier said than done but i would say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the seven that's years that's before okay. that made us made us uh yeah very much equipped to yeah. handle anything because when you work with the big the big ones you get a good training mm-hmm. who would who does most of the writing claude does most of the, the, the top line the top line i i do all the music yeah okay so so literally so the lyrics themselves claude you're responsible for your can i can i Say so, right, you're responsible for most of the lyric, lyrical, lyrical content. Yeah, for most, for most. Okay, and then Chuck, you sort, you handle the arrangements and the music and the actual keyboard. Keys of keyboards you major in? Because I seem to remember seeing a lot of keyboard playing going on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> piano is my primary instrument, so yeah, that's I always so. available to me. But I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm a producer's producer, meaning that I care more about the song than I care about getting my rocks off as an instrument. No, that's cool. Sometimes I use myself because I, I play all the instruments and sometimes I use other cats to give me a, a certain kind of feeling on a certain kind of instrument. Let me ask you about specific tracks because I'm just intrigued. The I Wonder. Let's, mm-hmm. let, let's discuss I Wonder on, the, on your latest album, American Griots. Mm. Tell me, how did that come about? Because I want people to get a flavor, a, a flavor of what you do and how you do it. Because the yeah. process, there's no way that process was a walk in the park. <laughs> so, so, so just talk me through how you, who thought of the idea? And then how did you go about building a track? Okay, well, I wonder, it's, it's actually a good question, because I wonder actually tell the story of how we came about, the development. So before we live, we're, we're, we're talking to you now from Franklin, Tennessee, which is where we're headquartered. But we, 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 our whole company moved to Franklin, Tennessee. Our company is called Weirdo Workshop. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we were in New York just figuring this whole thing out. And right. how we got our name, Lewis York, mm. is because Chuck's from East St. Louis. He's from East St. Louis, and I'm from New York City. Okay. So it's a combination of our two, our, where we're from. We, were, we happened to be in the studio, and it was when actually some of this, some of the civil unrest that's now taken over the world was right. bubbling up in New York. So it was right after uh, Eric Garner 
got killed and, and, and things were happening in, in Ferguson. So just by, just by chance, we're in the studio, look up at the TV screen and New York, it was a split screen of New York and East St. Louis, both rioting and on fire. And so a lot of the art we do is built off of not just us trying to make cool things, but what does the world need right now? And so sometimes you walk in the studio and you have no idea what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. And the world de- defines that. So that, then this is back in 2015. Uh, we wrote that melody because we were so, and the, and the lyric at the piano, because we were so frustrated with the world and felt like these were the things that were keeping us up at night. And what, rather than preaching, we just couldn't figure out if, if we were doing things right. Are we messing this up? Is, would this make Martin Luther King and his legacy proud? Would this make Malcolm X proud? Michael Jackson as a musician and as a, as a businessman proud. Marvin Gaye, who pr- provided what's going on, would he be proud with where we are as musicians, black men, citizens of the world. And because we believe in good music, we took that idea and have been slowly building on that idea. Mm-hmm since then as the world got more intense and then we finally got here and then then we were building american griots the album and wanted to figure out what songs needed to be on this project that spoke to the world and taught people but also let people know that what our the journey we've been through and we could not not put that thought mm-hmm. on and the album so by the time you hear it it's taken on new life because we've been performing as a band for several years. We've tested this song out with people. We've watched the emotional reaction. So after a live show in Franklin, um, a big show we had here, we had arranged it live with no plan of doing anything. And we arranged it with, uh, how you hear it, with Caroline Randall Williams, the, the, the poet, and Patrick Daly, who's the, um, the, the contralto. Right. And we got a standing ovation for that, mm. that arrangement. And that's when we decided we had to take that version and master that as a as a piece of art to put on the album I wonder if Martin was alive now would he be proud mm. I wonder if Malcolm was alive now, would he be proud? Would he be? I was going to do a really long intro to try and introduce you two guys and the music you do. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do this <laughs> because if you you can be so eclectic in the way you use instruments, the way you use lyrics. You mentioned poetry there, you mentioned the, you, you mentioned there's an opera singer mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. wafting in and out of some of the tracks. But it all, is, it all ends up being a very co- cohesive sound and project. Thank you. Um, no, because you listen, I'm just telling you as <laughs> it is, if I, I really, but the important thing to me, if you had to write an intro for yourselves, how would you write an intro? How would you describe your band? Mm. That's a good question. That's a great man. question. I'm full of good questions. No, <laughs> answer, no, no, absolutely no answers, guys. But you know, <laughs> just question. call good questions. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. go go for it. How would how would you how would you describe? I I mean, well, I'll describe it with our mantra, what who we are in our minds. Um, we describe ourselves as uh, original composers for the 21st century, right. and that means being forward-thinking musicians, innovative musicians ahead of your time um and and to some degree just a, a sacrificial uh process because it 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 take people pushing things forward and making people uncomfortable for to make the road for mm. other musicians and for better music because like we always say we're fans of music first and mm. so in innately we do what's best for music as a whole mm. and then we do what's best for for us as artists and us as creators, like getting our dreams out, but in just subconsciously, we do it for the betterment of the whole. And so to some degree, what me and Claude are doing are, are kind of trying to break down barriers so, so musicians and especially black musicians can have a broader spectrum from which to create. They won't have to create down this formulaic path that you're talking about. They'll be able to do country music and they'll be able to do opera and they'll be able to do jazz and they'll be able to do all these different kinds of music, keep it cohesive and hopefully make it commercial. And that's that's our chore is to make all of this stuff commercial. 
That is why I didn't want to write an intro. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, did you hear that? <laughs> so, so but now, what would you be your way of introducing your, your band, Claude? The people, the people, the, the two black men that gave some of the biggest, most unforgettable hits of the last 10 years mm -hmm. um, have now officially and completely joined forces right. to make the music that the world needs right now. Mm -hmm. Not just to follow the trend, not because technology says so. Our job is strictly to make the music the world needs. Mm -hmm. um, that means we have to remove our ego and we have to do things that make us, um, us feel uncomfortable. But the whole idea is not to be the hottest beat maker or even the hottest dancer on stage or even the, or even the most uh, fancy singer. It's to get to the heart of people. It's, the, it's why our inspiration is Bob Marley and Ray Charles and Earth, Wind and & Fire. And um, those artists that were commercial but also hit you right in your, right, right here right, in your right, chest. Right there in your chest. Uh -huh. Yes, that's what we're about. And we don't stop writing, recording, or performing the song until we get people there. That's what's missing from music right now. And so that's kind of our mission, is to remind people what the heart of this thing is about and keep hitting them right there. So you, you, you both clearly feel passionately about this and about your mission, and I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. About, about giving people what you believe they need. But would, mm -hmm. checking out the music scene at the moment, the R&B music scene, whatever that means. Because people mm -hmm. often say to me, what does R&B mean? And right. uh, I just look at them and I say, no, you tell me what does R&B mean? Because I, I think now that there's just, uh, how can I put it? There are many different ideas behind what R&B means now. And to mm -hmm. me, it means something totally different what it, to what a lot of today's artists believes it means. And I'm just fascinated right. by you saying, right, you want to give people what you believe they need. But do you think that the people out there, the general public at the moment, are ready for what you want to give them? Do they want what you, what, what, do they want, what you want to give them? You understand? It's one thing they're needing yeah. it. Yes. Do you believe they want it? Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. yeah if, I didn't, if I didn't believe it, because my whole mission is for people, it's, it's it's not for myself, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if I didn't believe that they wanted it or needed it, I, would, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't do, do it. it. You know, like what people, what, what I want people to understand because it's very hard to separate um, musicians from fame seekers, from social media stars, it's hard to separate. And so I, I wanna make it clear to people when I, when I talk to them that Louis York became artists kicking and screaming it was not we didn't want to be famous we didn't want to be hot we were already making money doing music so this was actually it, 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 it wasn't a uh, we didn't we didn't make more money by becoming artists you know what i'm saying like we were got you i'm with you yeah I'm we with were you. doing our thing as so um songwriter and producer so this was really about that thing it, it was doing what people what we think people need and what people want and believing in that wholeheartedly so i want people to know that we, we this is not this no this not for fame at all this has, it hasn't been glorious we've lost a lot of friends a lot of business partners a lot of a lot of hangers on there's, of been, a, there's been a lot of money uh, we've, we've turned down a lot of things and we've also been told that this won't work many many times mm -hmm. but what i also know is that the songwriter and producer chuck and claude that did the research before we got here right Studio with many, 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 many artists. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you is that 99% of them were unhappy yes. because they weren't able to do the kind of music they wanted to do or that they knew, music they knew would move their audience the way they wanted to move their audience. They didn't feel mm -hmm. they had the songs for the stage or the songs on their album. And also, having been out there and toured and performed as Lewis York now and broken other artists and been on stage with many other artists as well, we have found out exactly what gets people going on stage. This is not for fame. We're committed. We sweat right. on stage. We rehearse mm -hmm. like we're like we've never done music before. Yeah, um, right. we, we write these songs and edit them and work on them until until the last minute when you guys hear them because we're trying to make uh, classics. Quincy Jones is is mm -hmm. uh, we always we, we talk about Quincy Jones a lot, but even more we talk about how um, we refer to Rodgers and Hammerstein and how you have these these two men that wrote music that was incredibly socially conscious, but became the songs of our time because they were also catchy. And that comes with hard work and focus and int intention. So that's what we're about.
literally every artist that's memorable and has made the most money and sold the most records, those people were always originals. You know, you, you, they're, they're, the reason why we talk about Michael Jackson is not necessarily because there's 10 of them, it's because he actually is an original black man. And, it's, and it's, there's no way you find Sade, there's no way you find Sting, there's no way you find Queen, the band, there's no way you find Lauryn Hill or Amy Winehouse or all these people that that, that we now consider just legendary and, and, and at the top of, of our pedestals of, of, of rock and roll without always looking for the people that are doing something unique and different. You always have to fight for your art. Nothing comes easy with, with, with making a difference. No legendary um, career or legendary um, platform comes easy. You know what I'm saying? And so mm. I'm all, I've always been prepared. I, I feel like even from those list of people that you named that I've already worked with, I felt like I had to fight for each one each time. Like every it was, time, it, it was always like even when you listen to like a, a party in the USA or price tag, you hear you hear the the intention and the integrity in music, and that don't always go down that easy with gatekeepers. And so mm. we're always fighting for for the integrity of the music and the lyrics. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we won't stop. Tell me more about the album, because I want more people to hear this album. I mean, I mean I've, I've listened to it, and as I said, every track, if you're expecting it to smoothly transition from one track to the other, this is one of those albums which doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, one minute you'll be chilling out in, you know, you listen to something like, I don't know, Velvet, yeah. sort of mid-tempo ballad kind of thing, and then you'll then we'll, we'll flip again and we'll go to nerds. And I, I, listen, I've heard so much different music, right, on this thing, and, I, it just, and I'm thinking, where, what... Are you happy as a whole with the project? Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Where's the next step? Where's the next step gonna be? I, I was just about to say that American Griots was, we wanted that to be our calling card. Like we're not just one thing. We don't want, we don't want to be pegged at one thing. Like we can do, we can do the, the, we can run the gamut of genre, of tempo, of subject matters. And that was supposed to be our calling card for where we want to go. Like. Um, um, scoring for movies and doing commercials, just just being having our music um, circulate through popular culture in a in a in a in a real integral way, mm -hmm. not just a fast microwaved way. And so, American Griots was our calling card for that. Look, look, this is what we do as creatives. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. And the the flip side of that is telling the story of how as black men that we have a right to do those kinds of things because a lot of these genres, we, we actually started, we started them. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so, exactly. So when, when I do a country song, it's not really far-fetched as people may think. You know what I'm saying? But because we started that stuff. That's what Charlie Pride, he was, and, and so we want to remind people of that thing. We want people to put that two and two together and stop, like Claude was saying, stop making this eclectic scene like such this like this far-fetched thing when in actuality we are eclectic. Mm -hmm. You're a musician, like you like all kinds of music. And so when you sit down and go into the studio, why would you go one down yeah, one Why would you box yourself like that? Well, do you not think that's because people just want to get paid? They want to get, they want a recording contract. They're looking at the gatekeeper who says, listen, you look like this. So you, we want you to sound like that. that. That's definitely a way that people are doing things, but it's, it's low hanging fruit. Yes. Because when you, when, when you look at the end of the year, what artists are, are paying the bills for everyone who's failing, uh, it's Adele, it's Taylor Swift, it's people like that, and they're all, yeah. the Bruno Mars, they're, they're, they're one of a kind. So all, you can run and tie yourself really fast trying to be a carbon copy of someone, or you can slow the pace, understand that it might take a little longer for people to understand you because you're one of a kind, but the results of being one of a kind and connecting with people could mean Adele's success. It could mean Beyonce's success. So we believe in that road. Both roads have proven to work. We're not yeah. saying that there's people that that didn't come and blow up overnight, but we personally subscribe to the idea that you can um, be yourself, be diverse, be excellent, and collect a lot of fans and memories along the way. Mm. And so just to add to Chuck's point about American Griots and we ask what's next, um, Far before 2020 and the world was like it was, we had this understanding two two years ago almost that um, we had to let go of some of the, the Hollywood trappings of what being an artist meant. So 
uh, as soon as you get, a, you get a record deal, you have to have this kind of car and this kind of jewelry and be in this kind of video and get this endorsement. We hope that stuff happens, but really your, your job as a musician is to tell stories. And if you're on tour, then you are griot because griots were going from village to village. That's right. Telling the stories yeah. about their about their history, your history, American history, the world history, the country you're from's history, uh, and we had to re re in, reinvent that in our head and get out of the mindset of like what the social media numbers were saying and what the labels would be saying and what our peers would say. The reason we we put this mute, that that collection of songs are together is because all of them are telling a story about us, about how we see the world about how we want to see the world. And the Griot part means that it's our mission with that album first, but if everything we put after that to report what we're learning. Mm. And so since that album came out, we have obviously had a lot of time at home as the whole world has to kind of right. stay safe and think about life. And it's been a, a strange but necessary pause. And uh -huh. we've, we've used that time to, to create music that's, that, that's about what we've been thinking about. We, yeah. It's about us. It's personal. It's about us not being able to travel the world, but traveling inside our mind a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now that there's not there's less noise. It's about what it means to be separate from loved ones. Um, what it means to uh, to be disciplined like this because we haven't been disciplined as humans like this for quite some time, and how that manifests in your art. What's happening with society and social media and in internet and politics? It's all a new product that we've had the the time to create in the last couple months. So we already have our next album about 85% done now. Wow, wow. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's eclectic, because it always is. Bear in mind, 85% of the album done already. And of course, a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. has come from the problems which are happening in the world. I mean, in America, what you've got, I don't know, the equality issues, the, the fires, um, the political situation. Wow. Yeah. So you've got, so you, so when you think about it, you're not short on material. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. And, that, and that's, just a, that's just a sliver of, the, of, of, of what we've created during this time. Our album is one, is one part of many things we've been doing during this time. Really? Are there any love ballads? Are there any love ballads on the album? Yes. Uh, yeah. There good. are. No, I like a good love ballad. We want to make no. sure we cover all the emotions. So, you, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough time, but it doesn't mean the music has to all be tough. It's also been a, a, a joyous time too. We've learned a lot. We've grown a lot as musicians. So it's not just about the sadness, it's about the joy of growing up and learning and friends and family and, and finding the, the true value in the right things. So mm. it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a sad album. No, no, I'm quite, no I, I wouldn't expect it to be because the last one <laughs> was serious in places, yeah. but also joyous in other places. Right. If I don't go, if I don't go, how will I feel in the morning? Tell me if I don't go, if I don't go, if I don't go, if I don't go. The reason why we're the musicians we are is First, we spent many years before we got in the business in all kinds of music iterations, singing, playing, performing, touring. But the years that we were in the music business with those records you speak of, um, how, we, how we sharpened our tools and built our muscles was we treated every single record, the demo, like it was the final record. Yep. So okay. that's how much the bar has dropped in general. And that, that's, not, that's not a personal opinion. Um, if you ask many, many songwriters, producers, musicians, how, how the quality has changed, um, that's, that's universal. Um, and so that, that's the scary part because if, 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 if our bar is not high, then, what, then are we even an industry? Uh, I think great, Chuck, I, okay, I consider us great musicians. So I'll say that first, but I think, I believe great people get great by studying great, other great people. Yes. So we don't actually spend a lot of time studying other musicians. We have before, but now we're, we're trying to broaden our minds. So if you, we study great athletes, we study, but even more, we study great authors and great chefs and great designers and great uh, movie producers and writers and things like that. And if musicians don't get back to a place where we're, we're, we're creating and serving our stuff with that intention, whether it's on your iPhone or whether it's in a, a studio you waited four months for, 
then there'll always be a disconnect and there'll always be that question of where we stand, where musicians, where black musicians stand. And that's, that's, that's our goal is to, is to fix that little gap. Anybody who's listened to this interview will hear the passion. And I just want, next thing I want him to do is now go and hear the album. Yeah, yes, please. Okay. please. Yeah, it's out, the album's out there, American Griots. Yes, yes American Griots. The album. The album. <laughs> go out there, go out there, check it out. And um, as I said, if, it, if you wonder why straight away it's not familiar, that's because probably because a lot of it isn't familiar, but let it, let it have time to grow on you. Let it seep in. It might be slightly different than what you're, what you're normally used to listening to, but let it seep in and, let, and listen to it. And I think, I think there are things there for everybody. There's a track on there for everyone, which is fantastic. I'm going to ask you one quick question before we, you have to go. What's this thing with the Shindellas? <laughs> Man, Talk to me about it. Let me know what's happening. I think they're fantastic. Thank Just you. Being honest, I think they're really good at what they do. Um, mm -hmm. It's you. Once again, you guys describe the music for the public, and then tell me what, where you're at with them and, and where you want to take. Them. Well, we had this. We had the idea of to 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 put together a girl band maybe three or four years ago mm -hmm. while, while in LA, and the, the idea was to to show unity in black women and use music as a platform to do that. We were like, if, if you if you watch the, the 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 visual for our first single, Claire Huxtable, that's uh -huh. our our whole our whole deal was saying that we want to see a different representation from black women. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we want to see, we want to see what we see every day on TV, basically right. these, these phenomenal women that that's in our lives and, um, in all different kind of capacities. We want to see them on TV. So that was the starting point for the Shindellas and really their sound is just, uh, it's extension of Lewis York. You know what I'm saying? Like we have things that we want to say, uh, musically and lyrically that we couldn't say as men, but we can definitely say them through uh, three talented, strong, yes. independent women. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Shindellas represent. Okay, and, and where, do, where do you see that going in the future as far as the Shindellas working with you guys or going out on their own? What's the story there? We, we, we're working on their debut album now. Like our mind is open as, 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 the, as, the, as the world is changing. We, we, we're always looking for the next new thing to uh, insert our creativity. And so our mind is open, but we are working on an album right now with the Shandellas. Great. So, so when you guys come over to London, will I be looking to see you with the Shindellas? We were working on that before. before we, COVID, yeah, we were, we were supposed to be coming to coming to London for a show, and just you know, we London has a special place in our heart. We've written some great songs for many artists there, but also for the Shindellas. London has we have synergy with that city, um, and we were there off. We were there two times last year. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we want to go back there and, and, and blow, blow y'all away with a great show, us and the Shindellas. And we have a good feeling that uh, some of our, our, our most faithful supporters will end up being from London, because I know how y'all feel about music, soul music. Yeah, yeah, we do. We are, we are a little passionate. <laughs> I like that. Bit, we're, a little, we're a little bit passionate. Okay, okay listen, Claude, Chuck, you guys have been fantastic, really. Thank you, um, you know. Us, you know, it's, it's been my, it's really been my pleasure. And it's been great just getting to know some more about you and, you know, and what drives you, what your motivations are. And hopefully, and also to know that you've got 80% of the next album ready. So I'm kind of <laughs> rubbing my hands together. I'm not sure you have, you haven't given me a hint as to when that might be coming out, but I'm hoping it's very, it's going to be within the next, uh, let's say six months anyway. I'd love to hear yeah, something. Yes, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Listen, it's been fantastic speaking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Wes. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Cross the Tracks. Join me again soon for our next journey. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platforms, whether that be on Apple Tunes, Spotify, Amazon, or Google. And please remember to follow WBSS Media on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to get info on the latest episodes as soon as they are released. Stay curious. Stay curious.